And in this particular video, we have a nice interesting percent word problem. So let's go ahead and read it right now. It says a stock went down 60% to $17.80. So what percent does the stock, does it need to rise to get back to its original price? And the original price that we're talking about in this particular problem is the price it was at before it went down 60%. So feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then I'm gonna go ahead and solve this step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link in the description. And if this video is helpful, even to the slightest, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So if you're a little bit confused here, well, I'm gonna go ahead and walk through this step by step, but let's just go back to the problem real fast. What is the first thing you wanna do when you're solving any math word problem or any math problem at that? Well, you wanna read the problem more than once, okay? So I read this one time and it kind of explained it uh, to a certain degree, but you know, you're not gonna have someone kind of explain the problem to you. So what you have to do is really focus, read the problem, read it again, and really make sure you understand what the question is. So we're looking here, what is the percent does it need to rise? We're talking about a percent of increased problem to get back to its original price. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And as I um, kind of indicated, the first time you read a problem, that's just to get a sense of what's going on, okay? You need to reread a problem over and over again to really understand the details. But beyond that, when it comes to solving a math word problem, you want to model this situation, okay? Now, there's different ways you can model it. And stylistically, one is no uh, better than another, as long as you understand what's going, uh, going on. So let me go ahead and show you how I kind of modeled uh, this particular situation so I can kind of visualize the problem. So the way I'm gonna think about it is the following. So we had a stock and it was at some price right here. Okay, but I know it fell 60%, and uh, after it fell 60%, that unfortunate, you know, uh, reduction in its stock price, it's sitting at $17.80. So right here, this would be the original amount, okay, and obviously it fell 60%. It's at this current amount, but we are hoping that this stock will get back to its original amount. So to get to go from $17.80 to get back to the original amount, whatever that is, and of course the original amount here is the original amount we're interested in getting back to, we're looking at uh, for the percent of increase. So what is the percent of increase from this starting point, $17.80 to get back to the original amount? So again, you know, uh, it's very helpful to have some sort of model. And again, stylistically, you know, there's different ways you can approach this. Uh, just make sure if you're doing this like on a test or quiz that you kind of, you know, lay things out so your teacher can at least somewhat follow your logic and understand kind of what's going on. Okay, so in order to solve this problem, we're certainly going to need the original amount, right? You got to be very careful here because here the stock fell 60%, okay, from whatever its starting point was, it fell 60%. So 17 uh, dollars and 80 cents. Does that represent 60% of the price? Now think about this for a second. This is a real tricky part of this problem. Well, at least a part that I think a lot of people could get confused with. The stock fell 60%. So this is how much a 60 reduction in 60% uh, reduction in the price is. So this really just represents 40% of the original amount. Okay, it's not 60%. Okay, if this was 60%, that means the stock fell 40%. So the stock fell 40%, meaning that we, I'm sorry, the stock fell 60%, meaning that we only possess 40% of the original price. So 1780 is 40% of the original amount. So what we wanna do is kind of distill this into a new problem, and here it is. So we to find that original amount, this is the question you wanna answer, okay? So it's 40% of what number is 1780, okay? 40% of what number is 1780? Because that is what 1780 represents. It's 40% of the original stock price because again, the original stock price fell 60%.
Okay, so hopefully you understand that. And if you do understand what I'm saying here, the next step is, can you solve these percent problems? And this kind of brings us to another phase of um, uh, the problem or the solution uh, to solve this particular type of percent problem. Now, if uh, you don't know how to solve it, I'm going to show you how I'm going to solve it. But you need to solve, be able to solve a variety of percent problems. I love to use algebra because it's just so easy and crystal clear to set up a nice equation. But let's go ahead and see how I'm going to do this right now. So 40% of what number is 1780? We want to figure out what uh, that number is. So how do you find a percent of a number? Now, I'm kind of assuming you have some basic percent uh, skills and knowledge. If you do not, let me just kind of recommend a couple things here. I teach uh, percent uh, in my math foundations course, pre-algebra and algebra one course, all those courses are excellent. If you need to review basic equations and uh, percent, specifically, I would probably point you towards pre-algebra. I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel you can review about basic percent. But effectively, when you want to find a percent of a number, we need to uh, change that percent to a decimal. So 40% is 0 0.40 as a decimal. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to find 6% of 20, I would have to change that percent to, uh, to a decimal that would be 0 0.06, and then I would multiply it by 20. So how do I go from a percent to a decimal? Well, we just move that uh, decimal point over two places to the left or divide by 100. Again, you need to make sure you understand basic percent before you take on a problem like this. Okay, so we're going to take 40%. And we're going to uh, take 40% of some mystery number. We don't know what that is, so we'll just use a variable x. But 40% of this number x, we don't know what that is, is, that's the equal sign. Okay, anytime you see the word is, that is uh, represents the equal uh, symbol in terms of algebra or mathematics, is 1780. So let's just kind of re read this here. So 40% or 0 0.40 of some number x is 1780. So what we need to do is solve for x. So here's the equation, 0.40x is equal to 1780. So to solve for x, what do we need to do? Well, simply divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.40. So get our calculators out, 17.80 divided by 0 0.40 is equal to 44.5. So what does that represent? Well, that's the original amount, okay? That's the actual stock price before it had that unfortunate um, fall of 60%. Okay, and if you don't, you know, trust that number, just take 60% of 44.5 uh, and subtract it away from 44.5, and you're going to see it's 1780. Okay, or find 40% of 44.5, you'll see it's 1780. Okay, so now I think you know this is puts us in a real good position to figure out the rest of the problem. So uh, our original starting amount was 44.50. It fell 60% to 1780. Now we've got to get that stock to get back up here to 44.50. So what is the percent of increase to go from here to there? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so uh, oftentimes uh, you know, students get confused with percent of change, and we're talking about percent of increase and uh, percent of decrease. But the first thing we need is the uh, difference. Okay, we need to figure out the change from 1780 to 4450. We have to figure out how much did this change, this price change. Well, to do that, we simply just need to subtract these two numbers. So 4450 minus 1780 is 2670 okay so we need to um you know kind of take this question and refine it the percent of change that we're looking at is uh 2670 compared to 1780 let me make that a little bit more crystal clear so here is our model okay so here's the current stock price at 1780 we want to go up $26. We need to increase this price, $26.70, to get back to our original amount. So what is the percent of increase on our stock? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and now take a look at the basic formula for percent of change or percent of increase. Okay. And this is all uh, something that hopefully all of you know, okay, outside of solving basic percent problems, again, percent of change, i.e. percent of increase and decrease, is something we need to know. So the first thing, the general formula is we need to know the change, okay? 
uh, from the starting amount to the ending amount, and we have that. Okay, remember, we're talking about that stock going from 1780 up, going up another 2670, so we can get back to 4450. Okay, so that's the difference. All right, this little symbol right here too, this um, uh, triangle, that's called the delta, delta. If I could spell that right. Uh, symbol, okay, it just means difference or change. It's kind of a fancy symbol, but if you've never seen it before, it's pretty common in mathematics, especially more advanced math. But basically, this is, just means uh, subtract the two values of starting and the ending amount. So that difference here, in this case, is 2670. Now, when you are finding the percent of increase or percent of decrease, you always compare it to the original starting amount, okay? So we're going to compare this change, 2670, uh, to 1780. Now, let's take a look at the decimal. This is not our percent. This is the decimal amount that we're going to get. So 2670 divided by 1780 in our lovely little calculators, you're going to get 1.5. Okay, but that is not a percent. That's a decimal. Okay, so how do we go from a decimal to a percent? Well, we have to multiply by 100 or move that decimal point over two places to the right and when we do that, we get 150%. So that makes sense. If you think about it, if I uh, started from at 1780, if I increased my stock from 1780 100%, that means I'm going to add on another 1780. That's a 100% increase from, from 1780. But uh, I'm going to have to go all the way to 2670 to get back to my original starting amount. So that is a 150% uh, increase. Now, let's go back to this original kind of um, model here, and I think it's kind of interesting to see the situation. So here, we had our original starting amount. It dropped 60%, okay, down to 1780. But to get right back up to your original starting amount, we're going to have to go up 150%. And if you know anything about stock trading, you know, that's a pretty aggressive, you know, game, right? So uh, when people think about, you know, their financial portfolios, if there's trading stocks, bonds, whatever the case you might be, you're like, oh, you know, my stock just dropped 60%. Oh, so if it just rises another 60%, it, get, it will get back to break even. Not true. You, that stock is going to have to go up 150% just to get back to break even. Okay, so hopefully you found this uh, problem interesting and more importantly, uh, practically useful in terms of solving percent problems. You absolutely need to know how to solve a variety of percent problems. It's probably one of the most practical math skills that everybody needs to know is how to deal with percent. So again, if you need additional help with percent, check out my Math Foundation course, my pre-algebra course, all those horses, uh, all those courses, excuse me, will help you out. And again, I have a ton of stuff on my YouTube channel as well. But if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.